Next, we have Megan Wilkes, who is an Oak Cliff legend. If you haven't stopped by Emporium Pies, I definitely recommend you do that. Round of applause, please, ladies and gentlemen. Hi, I'm Megan Wilkes, and I'm going to share some feelings with you, which is not something I do very often. Don't have a lot of those that are out. Um, so it has been a thrilling couple of years. I opened a pie shop. All these are gifts, and they're not going to work, so sorry. Um, it's been thrilling to open a pie shop. It's really been a fulfillment of a dream of mine and my business partners. Um, the first few years have been a whirlwind of excitement and all the things that come along with that. Um, but like every dream that you have, um, a lot of times um, it comes in with a little bit of reality to slap you in the face. Um, for me, there were two major buzzkills of opening my own business. One, that people seem to feel like, because I'm a woman, I can't do things on my own. I've had people ask to speak to my husband before they'll let me sign a business deal. And people are jerks on the internet, um, especially Yelp. Um, I've always considered myself to be a bit of a feminist. Um, I was raised um, with two sisters and a family with two sisters. Um, I'm going to slow down because my slides are going longer. Um, people are rude on Yelp. Yay. Um, <laughs> I've always considered myself to be a bit of a feminist. I was raised in a family. Um, I have two sisters. I have 10 female cousins. And everybody's like, go get them, girls. You can do anything you want. Um, being in business for myself has solidified my idea that we need to work towards feminine equality. Um, I don't know what it is about those double X chromosomes, but people really think it messes up our brains. Um, I've also always had a deep love for etiquette particularly hospitality. I own six editions of Emily and Post Etiquette, and I love to see how etiquette has changed over time, how we treat each other just in our interactions have changed. Um, opening the pie shop was a way for me to share a part of my heart with the world. I love to host people, and when I have people in there, it really is like I'm opening up my house to them, um, and it rips me apart in a really personal way whenever people just tear us apart on the internet. Um, bad reviews hurt in a lot of ways because uh, they're just mean, but a lot of times um, when someone's disappointed, I can't fix it if their review is anonymous. How am I going to reach out to so-and-so on Google and be like, hey, man, sorry about that, and fix it in any real way? A lot of times the worst reviews are disturbing, and they're not about our hospitality. Recently we um, supported Ahmed, and people decided that they wanted to try to blow up our pie shop and threaten to do so on the Internet, and not just the pie shop, but my daughter's school. Um, it really got me thinking last Thanksgiving, though, when a helpful customer um, emailed me to let me know that the owner looked haggard the day before Thanksgiving, who wouldn't after an all-nighter when you were three months pregnant, um, and that bummed out their Thanksgiving plans. Would anybody feel like they really needed to say that to a business owner, especially if he was a man? To make matters worse, it was a woman who said it to me. To quote uh, Mean Girls, there's been some girl-on-girl -girl crime here. Um, <laughs> After several years um, of trying to rationalize this onslaught of negativity and sexism that I had unwillingly stepped into, um, I tried to get to the bottom of why people act the way they do on the internet. Um, believe it or not, um, I figured that that might help me find some peace, and it really has. Um, I wondered, maybe people um, are rude on the internet because it is anonymous. Maybe they feel like it's a way to solve problems or to let off steam. Maybe we're just a generation of sadistic psychopaths, but probably it's because they feel like that online crime is a victimless crime, when in fact I can attest that it's not. I found an interesting correlation between pseudo-feminism and the unfortunate side, of, which is an unfortunate side effect of true feminism, and their attack on traditional etiquette. Not only does this perpetuate the idea um, that men are not as good as women, but it also perpetuates the idea that um, my, I myself am more important than anyone else. Um, Pseudo-feminism, if you don't know, is often mistaken for real feminism. But instead of believing that men and women are equals, they believe that women are better than men. They're often outspokenly, and rudely so, misandrous, and believe that traditional etiquette and gender roles um, are a product of the patriarchy that should be done away with. Pseudo-feminists are often um, angry for lots of reasons, um, but one of those things, um, or one way you could offend them, my slides are going really slow, I'm sorry. Um, one way that you could offend a feminist is to try to hold the door open for her as a man, because why would you do that? You're insulting her um, strength as a woman, um, when really a, a, a real feminist would just say, okay, thanks, man, for getting the door for me. I'll do that next time. Thanks. Appreciate it. Um, 
I'm not saying that traditional etiquette hasn't been used to be the man literally pinning us down and keep women subordinate in the past, but it doesn't have to be that way. Um, I recently read an article by a prominent feminist that she made the point that her boss is allowed to treat people rudely at work and he can come in and be a tyrant and nobody would say anything. But if she did the same thing, um, she would be labeled, and you know what, <laughs> the B word. Um, my parents are gonna watch this later so I'm not gonna say it. Um, but anyways, um, <laughs> she would be labeled a bad word um, for the same behavior. This is obviously sexist and it does happen in the workplace. I'm not gonna say that all men are jerks, but it can happen a lot. The, her point where it came off the rails to me um, is that she was making the point that if men can act that way, I can too, and nobody should have any consequences for it. Um, she said, just do away with manners in general. And everyone can act rudely without repercussions. I say that this is the kind of vitriol that fuels BuzzFeed comments um, that escalate so quickly that they can become a train wreck that you can't look away from. Um, it solidifies that mindset that others are worthless, that you're better than them, and that everyone should act, <laughs> and the idea that everyone should act poorly in the name of good manners is to throw the baby out with the bathwater. If we're calling for true equality of the sexes, we need to say that men and women should act the same. We're not asking for 86 cents when men make a dollar. Um, in the end, I like etiquette because it allows us an avenue to be able to communicate with each other, whether we're disappointed in a pie that we got at a pie shop, or if we're angry or upset at our neighbor or our friend, we have a way that we can communicate together. Without it, we're just trolls who get on the internet and say hateful things to each other because we can't see the other's face. You can't see me crying in the bathtub at two in the morning because somebody called me bad names on the internet. Um, but it's true and it's real. I really think in the end that Etiquette and hospitality and feminism are three really great ways that we can work to better our world. Equality for everyone is, is what we have to strive for, really. In the end, maybe we can stop looking at our iPhones while we eat pie, because you know, if you're yelping while you're hanging out with your friends, that's not great. And we can start trying to make a better society by being nicer to each other on the internet. Great job.